developing story which we're continuing to investigate at BBC Verify. Meanwhile, the European Union Commission says it will reinstate the funds to the United Nations Relief Agency in Gaza. It will pay 50 million euros and also increase emergency support to Palestinians by 68 million euros. Several countries, including the UK, had paused funding after the agency announced the sacking of several of its staff of allegations they were involved in the 7th of October Hamas attacks. We speak now to Scott Anderson, who is UNRWA's Deputy Director of Operations, joins us from RAFA. Thank you very much for coming on the programme. Well, thank you very much for having me today. Uh, can I just first of all get your response to that funding? Uh, it's very welcome news. We very much appreciate the, the extra funding. Um, I think as you've probably heard, um, UNRWA was going to have to cease operations across our five fields. Uh, this hopefully will uh, get us through another month. And more importantly, it will allow us to continue to respond to the humanitarian crisis that exists here in Gaza. And what about those original allegations about connections with Hamas? I mean, all I can say to that is OIOS is investigating. Um, like all our donors, we look forward to the outcome of that investigation, which hopefully will lead to a resumption of funding and allow us to continue our critical life-saving work. Well, on that work, what is the state of play? I mean, I think things are very difficult right now. We've all talked about what happened in the north um, you know, yesterday and the, the tragic loss of life. Um, but what I think it speaks to is, is a larger sense of desperation of the population. Um, I was in the north on a reconnaissance mission last Saturday. Um, I was at that checkpoint not far from, from where this happened. Um, I saw four trucks being looted uh, while we were waiting to cross the checkpoint. Um, and I talked to parents who were desperate to find food for their children. Uh, one parent, one mother told me that her kids hadn't eaten for two days. So I think all everything that we're seeing is really a result of, of desperation, of pockets of starvation. And we've had reports of children dying of malnutrition. And so what is the solution? How is it is it logistically possible to get more aid to the north? I think it is logistically possible. Uh, the humanitarian community this morning, we were talking about different options to do so. Um, as we have for months, we would ask that the government of Israel open a crossing from the north of Gaza, outside the north of Gaza, into the north of Gaza, which would simplify and, and streamline our flow of goods. Um, should that come to pass, we have a plan to try to flood the north with food, which would hopefully do two things. It would calm the sense of desperation, but more importantly, it would, it would um, address the nutrition needs that exist for the 300,000 people that are still there. And lastly, just could we focus on Rafa? Could you give us an update about what the situation is in Rafa? Yeah, so I'm in Rafa. That's where, we're, where I'm talking to you from. There's 1.3 million people here. Uh, for, for context, uh, October 7th, there were 280,000 people here. Um, so while the situation is not as dire as it, in the, as it is in the north and we don't see pockets of starvation, we do see people that are hungry. Uh, we have not got aid in at a scale that's necessary to meet the basic needs of the population. Uh, it's something we work on continuously every day. And then while the, the sense of desperation does not exist, there is a sense of fear of what an impending operation could mean in terms of further displacement and access to food. And most people's daily lives consist of trying to find food, trying to find water, and trying to find bathrooms. Uh, there's just not enough of any of that for the 1.3 million people that are here. Okay. Scott Anderson, thank you very much for coming on the programme. Thank you. Thank you. Around the world and across the UK, this is BBC News.